before we get to this, we'll take uh, while we're waiting for Donald Trump to uh, be late to his own thing. This is Pat, somebody or other on uh, the Blaze, and um, apparently uh, MSN Joy Reid apparently um, said evil MSNBC attacks white Christians for Trump's Iowa caucus win. And this is him uh, going after Joy Reid. So I'm sure everything he said w that she said was is taken in total context. And of course, instead of focusing on evangelicals who are particularly uh, subservient to Donald Trump for some odd fucking reason, considering he thinks their religion is laughable, it's kind of like it's like uh, Ayn, Ayn Rand fans uh, who are who call themselves Christians to get elected. That's it's the same kind of uh, hypocrisy. But here we go. Interject. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just have to do a little mm -hmm. bit of business just for a second. Um, at this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as his it happens. His name's Donald Trump. Uh, Say we his will name. let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy. <laughs> Look how they're like, his name's Donald Trump. Say his name. Like they're at a fucking uh, police shooting protest. Say, something. Say his name. Say his name. We fuck. We know his name. And as a matter of fact, it's funny that not saying his name bothers you so much. Substantive and important. Um, the reason I'm saying this is, <laughs> of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. Other than the fact that he says motherfucker sometimes on the air. It's not out of spite. It is oh, not a decision oh, yes. that we relish. It is a decision sure. that we regularly revisit. Oh, um, oh, and oh, honestly, oh. earnestly, it is not an easy decision. Uh -huh. But of there course. is... Also, the, 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 the Pat dude in the background, he does the same thing that, um, that Glenn Beck does, which is just blather over top of it. Which I gotta say, as somebody who stop starts, and I know it drives some people crazy, but it, to me, this is a better way of actually contextualizing what I'm saying and what they're saying. But the idea that you'll kind of talk over what they're saying and and just inject like you're a fucking kid spitballing in a classroom uh, is, uh, is is kind of lame. It's kind of weak. It's a cost it to us as a news organization of knowingly uh -huh. broadcasting untrue things. Oh that my god! Fundamental truth uh -huh. of our business. Oh my and, who we are. and so his remarks tonight will not. Who air are you? Here live. We to will decide. Them, um, and let you know about oh, any news that he makes. Wow. Of course, to their audience, that's great. Yeah, and also most of their audience has the internet if they want to watch any of these fucking speeches. I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, that's, they don't care. Yeah, it they don't care. If nothing. you're watching MSNBC, you know who they are and what they do. Okay, a couple things. One, Pat, uh, there's no way that guitar behind you is in tune. Prove me wrong. Secondly, that's fake brick. I don't want to hear shit about fake news when you have the brick paneling that you can buy at fucking Home Depot behind you and you're barely hiding the seam with your head. And you're good with it. This is at the this is at Blaze headquarters. They don't have a rando brick wall there. And so it has nothing they don't to care. do with broadcasting untrue things. Because if that were the case, oh my that in March gosh. when the State of the Union happens, right. I don't expect to see Joe Biden's face right. on MSNBC. That's for sure. Oh. Oh, I see, because the, the idea is that they're carrying it. Well, again, uh just because your opinions differ from him. If the if he's fact checked live on the air, which is what a lot of them do, it's called Zebrick, is it? Um, it, it? You know, you can fact check him live on the air, and you get a response right afterwards. That's the difference between a campaign speech, for example, which is total bullshit, and the State of the Union, which actually has to measure up to what the Congress is talking about. And, and there'll be a difference between Republicans and Democrats, and there always is, but they get a response afterwards. Yeah. Well, these people are. Are we waiting till March? Yeah, it's for the State of the Union. Yeah, it's uh, why I. I don't know because he's That's old weird. and I don't Because he's old. Maybe think he'll he be replaced by then. <laughs> State of the Union. Yeah, but you're right. It's very late this That's year. That's really late. Wow. Union. Let's see. I think it's March 4th. <laughs> if I think. March 7th. Uh, we had more from... Uh... Well, that settles it. I um, Obviously, uh, Biden is uh, is failing miserably. Maybe it's... it. You know, it might be that they know that that's more than likely, you know, depending on how the Fed goes, right after where they're first, the first, like 
lowering of the interest rate happens. Well, yeah, when was the last time we played Rachel Maddow? <laughs> I know. Years oh. ago. Last night. Well, did, uh, and by the way, when he says play Rachel Maddow, he doesn't mean um, clips. He, he and those guys all dress up like her. And it's, uh, well, it's a little gross. I, I mean, I really, um, I had to block certain websites just so I didn't have to see I it. It was so just egregious gross. yes yeah. you had to play these clips. and by the way same thing with cnn like they played just a few seconds of it and then they bail and out. cut away and then jake tapper says iowa caucus goers decided to uh believe in the big lie he that oh man my, oh my other, gosh he utters oh my oh dear oh heavens not no not to don't upset pat like that also, he was talking, he didn't randomly say it out of nowhere. He's talking about that that poll we saw about 14% of the electorate there, half of them, a little over half of those folks who showed up in the fucking snow to, to back Donald Trump believe that, he, that Biden's not the legitimate president. Right? That phrase, the big lie. Wow. Every single What happened to Jake day. Tapper? He hates Donald Trump. Hates yeah, he him. does. He does. It's What's yeah, and what's not to like? I mean, granted, none of you would trust uh, Trump alone in a room with uh, your teenage daughter, um, would you? Would you? Would you? Ruined him. He it's ruined yeah. his journalistic tendencies because his tendencies. It's excuse me. It's an identity. He was a journalist at one point. Yeah. He's not now. That is he just stopped journaling. Not journalism. So like where Bill Maher has the 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 blind spot on religion. Religion, right? Yeah. Jake mm -hmm. He doesn't have a blind spot on religion. He's an atheist. That's not a blind spot on religion. That's a distinct choice, stupid. Tapper has it with Donald Trump. Yeah. They they cannot I think that's right. report on those things. I'm sorry. The, the funny part is is this orange crayon right here trying to describing Trump in the same idea as religion, not recognizing that he's describing a fiction in many ways, followed by large groups of people who often don't act in their own self interests. Legitimately, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, here. I don't know what mm hmm is. I don't know why he's mm hmm. There's Matt Allen, GOP fascism. Uh -huh. This is going to be fun. Uh -huh. uh, and the big picture takeaway from that, and I don't mean to be, again, too dark, as you said, on this, but <laughs> it is not, if we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism yes. in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. Right. We're worried we're about that. our democracy mm -hmm. falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government. <laughs> the leader who is. I love how they just kind of like interjecting from the back and can i just say for the record I, there's a certain amount of joy that i have in that because i understand that i play clips and shit talk from my show but i'm pretty much in a lot of ways in my estimation punching sideways all the time i i don't consider um trump an elite or someone above me um i, I on occasion i even it feels like I'm punching down even though I'm not. But as human to human, it's all lateral as far as I'm concerned in that regard. Uh, in this particular instance, these motherfuckers are just swinging at clouds. Trying to do that is part of that equation. This is, this is what real graphics look like and real show and real budget and real organizations. And they're like, God damn it. I work for Glenn Beck. I, worse, I work for Glenn Beck's Scraps. By the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. We've got uh, we're almost we're approaching sixty two thousand subscribers on YouTube. I'm just saying now'd be the time to subscribe. Didn't cost you anything. It's just an easy thing to do. Just throwing. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! But people wanting Are that correct. Say much mm -hmm. bigger. I love how they're just in the back, like oh my god, like it's a like they're uh, they hired some scabs and they're in the control room and they don't realize they're on a hot mic. Oh, we already hit sixty two. Sorry, sixty three. I gotta keep that's up. right <laughs> and the american electorate is made up of two major parties one of those parties has been flirting with extremism on the uh -huh. ultra right yes, for a very long time Democrats. they've brought them in in a way that they haven't been central to republican electoral politics ever before and i know because i've been studying this but once you have radicalized one Unreal. major party so that those are the preferences of the people who adhere to your party Democrats are the leaders interchangeable are you and you do you hear what he just yelled Democrats or communists? 
Well, that seems, you know. To, uh, okay, point, point, Pat. Yes, Trumpism is sometimes what we call it. Mm -hmm. well, it MAGA is. movement is probably a better way to do it. But the uh, maggots, maggots. It's it's MAGA Trump suckers. So maggots, all uh, uppercase MAGA, lower T and an S. They just lowercase T and an S. There is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. inside yes. Republican politics that what isn't being bamboozled garbage. by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing <laughs> Trump yeah. to get more and more right. extreme because mm -hmm. the more extreme things he says, the more they, the like more they adhere and to him. That, yeah. and, and that is coming from the, a very large proportion of the American right that adheres to the wow. Republican Party. And that's why this is a Republican Party problem more than it is the problem of one man and his leadership. And we, and we tie can't. The Jeez. Oh, my gosh. What guard? By the way, for the record, they didn't listen to anything she was saying. These are the same people who think that when Biden comes out and makes a distinction between MAGA Republicans and MAGA as a movement and regular Republicans and conservatives and religious types and whatever, that he makes a distinction in the same way. They're having the same flip out that they had over the basket of deplorable thing because she was basically making the exact same fucking case as Hillary Clinton made and as Biden has made, which is there are a group of these motherfuckers that can go into the blast basket of deplorable. They're racist. They're sexist. There's no way around it. They like him because of that. And then there are conservatives that you can actually have a conversation with. And we got to reach out to those folks. And what these guys want to do on behalf of Donald Trump is argue that everybody in the Republican Party is in the basket of deplorables. You have to be racist. You have to be sexist. You have to be proto-fascist. You have to believe Donald Trump is sent by fucking God or you're not really a Republican. You're a rhino or a, a hidden dem or a fucking cowardly independent. Garbage. Isn't that fun? Spilled out of her mouth. See what you've been missing over there? Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. Um, I have to see what this is. Don't put this. I don't think it's it. What is this? Nope. Oh, I see. Shit, La Freak. I see. Okay, good. Um, there shouldn't be links in there, but whatever. Okay, here we go. Back to where we were. Aww. Yeah, I can't. Because everybody's freaking out? Is that what they were supposed to be doing? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was that? Uh, what's wow. that? What's that stat on uh, Trump's? Uh, uh, yeah, that stat on Trump thing. Record. Uh, on the election what, alert. Yeah. What is this? Uh, he set the Iowa GOP caucus non-incumbent record. So. Oh. <laughs> right. Of all the. Uh, and come and big, by the way, the Qs are really mad because technically they think he's still president. So that's got to that's got to hurt. Or a non-president. <laughs> well, thanks for admitting that. Oh, that's got to hurt. Uh, with 56,260 votes, surpassing Ted Cruz's 2016 record. Mm. Of <laughs> yeah, by 5,000 after being president for four fucking years. 51,666. Very interesting. And you know what? And, and that's surprising because they had a low turnout. Uh, it was mm -hmm. like 115,000, whereas uh, the record, I think. Yeah, see the percentage thing that you're talking about? A lot of people just went, fuck this. Is 180. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So okay. that's uh, that's a huge, that shows you that he won by a bigger percentage than anybody ever has. And no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He got a bigger percentage of a smaller group. What the ever loving fuck are you talking about? A bigger percentage of a smaller group is a, is still a smaller number of people. This is the kind of thinking that gets Republicans thinking that, like, we won the Electoral College, even though we lose the popular vote every time. That makes us more popular in the fucking country. This is fucking bananas. The fact that they would even think of it in those terms. And even this guy seems to be like, uh, um. Well, in Iowa. He won. He won big. That's all well and good. <clears throat> He didn't win big. He got 5,000 more votes than Ted Cruz got. Four years. All the shit he did for America. He's got, he's got uh, the whole thing. He's got the whole Republican Party. Their nuts cradled in his hands. And, he, you know, he owns the Republican Party. He, MAGA is the GOP. End of story. This is a mandate. This is the biggest, greatest movement ever. And the motherfucker only came up with 5,000 more people showing up for him than Ted Cruz did? He barely cleared 50%. He was president already. They know what he's going to do. Can we not, can we wait more than 60 seconds to call Yeah, an wouldn't election? that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? People were still voting. NBC called it at like, I was, I was. Oh my God. They called it for Trump because he was well ahead. <laughs> There was, and by the way, in caucusing, 
I do think they should wait longer. But it wasn't going to change how much. It, even, even in the caucusing, everybody kind of expected that. Nobody was turning on MSNBC at the Trump fucking caucuses and going, oh, fuck it. I was going to go, but Rachel Maddow has already called it. Like, get out of here. Look at it like five in the afternoon and they, they called it. I mean, it hadn't even started yet. That's I love incredible. when Pat tweeted. Up. Yeah, but the caucus captains have already like said who's there on their behalf. They represent, they bring, they're bringing a certain number of people. They could tell by the volume that he was going to win, just not by how much. Again, well, I don't know why I'm defending this dickhead. About who you gonna, who you think is going to win <laughs> the IR caucus? It was Six, one the the what kind of caucus? Minute later, one minute later, it's been called. I'm like, oh, jeez, that's just yeah. Sad. Say the word Iowa, Chris. Iowa. Oh, very good. Okay. What was? Oh, he made fun of him too. Was saying before. What was I saying before? Uh uh. Yeah. Uh uh. Iowa caucus. <laughs> Check the tape. I love you. <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> He's hard on you. He, he is, is hard on you. He it it comes it's from racist. a place of love. I'm uh, no, just I know, trying I know. to help you, you assimilate you're, since you're, you're only a, want the best for You're him. a new American. <laughs> I'm merely trying to help you. Hey, by the way, I know I'm a new American. Why don't we all have caucuses? <laughs> right? Like, I feel like right? that would be such a... they're weird. That's are they why. weird? Yeah, I like the Democrats weird. one better, though. They're weird. I like the Which Democrats, one is that? The way they do the Iowa caucus, where you get in the room... And you walk to the corner of the room to which candidate, and then you try to persuade people to move to a different candidate. Ooh, I like candidate. that. That's much, uh, I, I mean, if you're going to do a call. Yeah, it's, gee, it's a lot more democratic that way. Isn't it? People stand up. But then, it, you know, in in the case of, uh, you know, Trump, especially in an evangelical area, a lot of your Christian friends knowing that you voted for a pussy-grabbing second-generation rich kid who's a piece of shit might, you know, just throw a monkey wrench in the idea. Okay, where's this guy? Oh, yeah, here's one of the caucus captains. These, they're passing these habits. Uh, by the way, um, that's live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Hold on one second. All right, let's see what this dude's saying. Hold on. That slew our Goliath, which was Roe v. Wade, which we've been fighting for years and years, and many conservative candidates have pledged to overturn it, and they never did. The other day, uh, Fonnie Willis was... Uh, so uh, they're, they're still dunking on uh, eliminating a woman's right to choose... And they will continue to do this. The message that they got from the uh, the midterms was not that they fucked up, and they they literally have a one vote margin in the house right now. One. If anybody on the Republican side has a, a God forbid has a heart attack or prolonged illness or is at, or quits, they're fucked. It's even. And I I, I mean, does uh, does anybody know? Does Kamala Harris have to come down? Does uh, the the does Chuck Schumer break the tie? Since she breaks the tie in the in the Senate, does Chuck Schumer break the tie in the House? Right. Out of church uh, the other day, Joe Biden was out of church, and they were they were talking about <laughs> there. You know, and is there a reason why Trump's never in church? About a number of Bible scriptures, and one thing they didn't do is use the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know who also doesn't do that? Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I wrote a letter to Trump, and I won't go into it, but I. You should. Yeah, it, he is gonna. It, let me get. Let me guess. He is gonna go into it. Said, you know, we are a Christian nation. We're not a deist nation, right? Uh, I, yeah, we are. We we really are. Like the founding fathers were deists. I said we need to lift high the name of Jesus because at the name of Jesus, demons flee. We have to realize. Well, that's obviously. Then that's 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 why crime is up. Because Biden won't say Jesus, and uh, the, the demons don't know where to go. <laughs> just running around in circles. That there is pervasive darkness in this country. We are losing our republic, and this country is fastly becoming a very satanic country that has turned its back on Christ. Um, I, if, I don't, I don't know that. A, a, a specifically a satanic country, because I, I'm not quite. Hold on one second. I. Um, do we have anybody who has like an opinion on that at all? Uh, Roll up personally. I, um, I, I mean, I gotta, can we just agree to disagree? Um, sorry. It's just stupid. Um, and, uh, we need to see a shift. And if we want to make... Yes, a big shift. America great again. We have to make America godly again. We need men in the pulpit who will stand up boldly. Just men? Hmm. Yeah, I guess I, I, 
I don't think that was an accident. Being courageously to stand mm -hmm. upon biblical truths. Well, I, mean, I, I got to say, most of the quote unquote men in the pulpits stand on biblical truths. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the vast majority of Christian pastors and ministers and stuff are talk about a talk about a uh, the, the Bible a lot. Has to happen. Not only not only biblical truths, but also get involved with politics. It's not about separating it. In many, in my opinion, Do you that's because you're stupid. Like, here, two of these guys. Uh, no separation of church and state, and uh, we are not a deist country. This is a uh, Christo fascist country. Do you agree? I mean, you in the pulpit, will you talk about political things at all? Or, or do you Oh, yeah, I do. And, you know, I'm a missionary in Armenia. Armenia, 100,000 Christians were just, you know, let, lost their homeland of Artsakh and are refugees in Armenia now. I was on the border during that whole entire conflict, helping the widows and the fatherless. I was held hostage. Were you? In Egypt and almost stoned to death by the Muslim Brotherhood back in 2021. I've been to 33 countries. And, in, and this has all happened under the Biden administration. Everywhere I go, they say, if you don't get Donald Trump back in office, we're going to lose our country. Not just your country. You, it, you, a lot of there's a lot of almosts in there. Um, so the you were able to escape Egypt, were you? And uh, because and the and the Biden administration didn't just. I I'm supposed they have the number of the uh the Muslim Brotherhood. They could have just said you know get rid of this dude. They could have done that clearly. When Trump I mean, that would be the satanic thing to do, wouldn't you think? Trump was in office. Mm -hmm. Our countries were secure. And we need to think mm -hmm. about that as well. I think it's totally fine for pastors and evangelists and faith leaders to be very vocal about their support. For well, yeah. I mean, if you don't know the Bible and, and you don't really care about the ethics and morals of the Bible that you're supposed to be teaching, uh, absolutely. Dive straight into politics. Shit, you might as well just talk about which car to buy while you're at it. Conservative policies and conservative values. One of the fake news media outlets, a big name, I'm not gonna mention, uh, did an interview with me and they said, but it rhymes with gene. Pastor Tenney, do you think Donald Trump is electable and why? Because I'm, of course their narrative is that he's not an electable Fox, candidate. I'm guessing. Fox probably. And I said, listen, if Peter was running for office, would you guys say he's an electable candidate? No, you would tout the fact that Jesus called him Satan and that he denied Jesus three times. It would kind of come up, I think, yeah. And had a violent history and cut off some guy's ear. And you'd be spending that on the media all day. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it was before he formed the church and became, you know, like, sort of realized the error of his ways. If he was... In between the whole ear cutting, denying him three times part, here's here's the issue with this uh, parallel, is that at least in the case of Peter, he was an apostle the whole time. He was following Jesus around, he was following his teachings, he had a certain belief system, but he knew uh, effectively what would later become the scriptures because he was there and heard it firsthand. Donald Trump doesn't know any of that shit. What a, what a, how about if we, we just asked one of the Corinthians? Long to see that he couldn't get the Oval Office. If Jesus was running, you would say Jesus has a mouth and a temper. He, You'd call him a communist. Weaved a whip and he's beat people with that whip. That he, Yeah, but we're not here to yuck anybody's yum. Again, he called uh, the Pharisees a brood of vipers and uh, children of the devil, right? And uh, I, I, if the rhetoric is true, if it's factual, it's not wrong. You know, the Pharisees were a brood of vipers. <laughs> okay. But the left news media would say, hey, Jesus Christ running for president of the United States. Yeah, but uh, just for the record, um, we're, we're not in uh, a tribal battle with the Pharisees in general. And the generalized, you know, uh, here's, I'll give you an example. Um, the... The Navajo um, would refer to the Comanche as uh, snake people. I I don't think, as bad as the Comanche were, that modern Americans of any sort would refer to people who were descendants of the Comanche tribe as snake people. Now, back then, if you lived in a wooden house in the middle of the plains and stuff, you'd come up with all kinds of fucking names for these folks because they did a lot of awful. But currently... Um, I, you wouldn't, yeah. United States is calling religious leaders a brood of vipers.
You see how they would spin it. So, um, well, I, I'm again, this would, uh, I think this was what we would refer to as false witness because you're putting words in their mouth and you're assuming behavior on their part that uh, you, by the way, do towards the likes of Jimmy Carter, who has clearly incorporated his Christian beliefs into his actual life and the mockery you make of Christianity by sucking up to a person like Donald Trump, who brags about the fact that he could sexually assault women and couldn't tell you a fucking Bible book, much less a fucking verse. Donald Trump is the best candidate that we have in this race. He's the greatest president. <laughs> that, well, that just means you have a very low opinion of everybody else. Of my lifetime. He yeah, you were born yesterday. He made promises, and he kept those promises. No, he didn't. He he left and we were still in Afghanistan and then Mexico did not pay for the wall and the tax cut was not the biggest ever because the the part of it for businesses stayed, but the part for individuals uh, has a sunset clause on it. Is, under Donald Trump, our border was secure with over... Because of COVID. Well, thank you, Xi Jinping, I guess, right? Thanks, Wuhan. Is that the argument now? Sorry. Thanks, Wuhan. Right. For 500 miles of border wall built, our economy was never... Slat fence. I mean, come on. Better. Under the Biden administration, my rent has increased by $400 a month. I'm um, I, I blame gentrification. 